Hi there, and welcome to Manningham Christian Centre's Sermon of the Week. I'm so glad you joined us. My name is Matt Wyatt, and I'm the lead pastor here. My prayer for you is that as you listen, you encounter God and find this message practically helpful. It would mean a lot to us if you were able to rate and subscribe. This not only lets us know how we can serve you better, but also spreads the message to those who need to hear it. Hey, thanks so much again, and I look forward to catching up with you later. Bye. Terrific. All right. What's going to be happening today is uh, um, I'm going to be sharing just very uh, briefly, but how many know brief doesn't reduce how important it is? Um, I'm going to be sharing briefly about our vision and direction uh, in the life of MCC. And uh, and then we're going to take a short intermission. Uh, we're going to have some nibbles and some snacks. Now, everybody say short. It's going to be short, okay? And it's so short that you grab it and come back and sit down and we are going to have our annual general meeting. For those who are watching online, we're going to go offline uh, for that because that's uh, particularly for those who are in attendance today and uh, we are going to hear uh, about all of the wonderful things that have been happening in the life of the church. We've got uh, Kelly Wishart, our CEO of CANET, going to be speaking as well and uh, going to be giving an update. So that's going to be exciting. Are you ready? All right. Praise God. I I left my clicker down there. Tim, would you mind? Everybody welcome Tim. We don't see Tim that often of a Sunday morning. Tim's one of our board members. I'll introduce our board a little bit later on. Tim has uh, left um, Pastor Rose and the family um, uh, left Chapel Life. Uh, for this morning just to be here with us today. So we pray an abundant blessing on Chapel Life this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for them, hey? Is that cool? Father, right now, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for who you are and what you're doing. Lord, just release the power of your anointing upon everybody at Chapel Life and as they celebrate and as they worship you this morning. Lord, let your anointing rest upon those who are serving and Lord, let them be refreshed in their serving, Lord, in Jesus' name. We all said? Amen. 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 I want to talk about just briefly, if we can have that first slide. Thanks, Daniel. Um, uh, yep, you can, uh, you can either go to the tap and hold orange dot or you can scan that and you can also receive uh, the notes from today. I would encourage you to get the notes from today. Um, they are uh, summarised uh, uh, in this book here, in this magazine. This magazine you will find up in the cafe. It's called Let's Build this. Um, but if you'd like a digital copy, then you can scan that. Or as I said, you can tap, you can hold your phone on the tap and hold orange dot in front of you. The vision. Our vision as Manningham Christian Centre is to be a large community where the perfect love of Jesus embraces all. You know, I, I, I would ask you the question, have we achieved that? Do you feel loved? I, pr- I pray that you do. I pray that you do. I hope that you do. And um, and each and every single person that walks through the door, I, I remember just recently hearing somebody um, uh, that, you know, was quite emotional about this, that when they walked through the door, they were overcome by how welcoming everybody was because at, uh, at other churches they had not um, quite... Uh, um, 
receive that. That hasn't happened for them. And so for us as a church, our goal is that the perfect love of Jesus would embrace all. How about how have we done with a large community? Well, I would tell you right now, we are a very large community. We are a large community because we have uh, literally, you know, hundreds of people come through here, not only over monthly, but almost weekly here because of the work of CareNet and the number of volunteers, uh, the home bases that we have, uh, the groups that gather together. And we have to understand that we have an online community as well. Do you know that just recently we now have 500 subscribers on YouTube. We've just ticked it over, right? Pretty amazing. Now, I understand that sometimes we subscribe to all, all, all sorts of things and never revisit it again. That's okay. But, but 500 is about a thousand eyeballs. <laughs> Unless you're a pirate. Arr! Uh, but maybe, you know, that's a thousand eyeballs. That's, that's, a, that's 500 hearts, you know. And I know that some people watch, watch our services in groups and families. And so that's even more. And so I know that God has positioned and is positioning us to have a play, be a place of influence in growing to be a large, a super large community where the perfect love of Jesus embraces all. One of our core values, which is one of the primary core values, I mean, I'm going to quickly go through our core values today, and it needs reinforcing. We need reminding, don't we? Because vision leaks. You know, if you don't keep it topped up, has anybody driven their car to the point of empty, empty? Like there's empty, but then there's empty, empty. Have you ever been empty, empty before? Yeah? It's not a nice feeling, is it? You just, no matter how much you turn that key, it's empty, empty. Not just E for empty, it's empty, empty. Well, vision leaks and we need to be reminded of this all the time. We are a supernatural church, right? Miracles are a normal part of everyday life. Doesn't mean we treat them lightly, but miracles are a part of everyday life. Uh, I just recently told a story of somebody, a lady came into our house just recently. She said, oh, I've just got a, ter- just in conversation, I've got a terribly sore shoulder. Can you pray with me? And I uh, invited Josh. Josh, come on, let's pray. And uh, Josh just prayed. And uh, guess what? Shoulder was radically, like the pain had gone completely. And she was like, like oh my gosh, that's completely gone. That's a supernatural healing, Amen. Amen. And so miracles can be either a, <coughs> a dinner on the plate, you know, that can be a miracle sometimes if uh, you might be listening or you're a single mom or a single parent or a carer and, you know, you might be struggling to make ends meet. Sometimes when those ends do meet, that's a miracle in itself. And so we know that the Bible says that miracles are a supernatural thing. They are uh, the uh, angelic host. The, it's the Spirit of God. It's the Holy Spirit working in us and through us. That's why it's a normal part of everyday life. Another core value is God's Word. Amen? We have to be founded upon the Word of God, the Bible. It is Holy Spirit inspired and Holy Spirit breathed. The Word of God is both spoken and written. Amen? Uh, We need to be sold out. Uh, Yeah? Is that right? You know, you, did, you didn't turn up here today because you're not sold out. You turned up today because I, I just you decided, I'm going to church today. I'm going to go and be with my church family. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to hear what Matt's got to say. You know, hopefully it's good. You're sold out. You're here. Amen. And, uh, and we are raising and becoming sold out followers of Jesus, not followers of MCC or followers of, you know, Matt Nana or followers of Sandra playing keys. You know, it might look like that sometimes, but we are followers of Jesus Christ. He is our absolute centre. We are authentic. Authenticity is a core value of Manningham Christian Centre. What you see is... What you see is what you get. I can, I, I'd rather be honest, amen? I'd rather be honest with what the Word of God says 
so that truth is heard and known and delivered. We are community champions. We are influencing those around us to help shape a better, safer and more vibrant community. You know, you only have to take um, five steps into your local supermarket or shopping centre and you may see, you'll probably see some sad faces, amen? Who need to know Jesus. Hello? Hello? I walked past one of our volunteers, one of our CareNet volunteers the other day up at the Pines and, you know, they grabbed me. You know, Matthew, hi, how are you going? You know, and I was, was I smiling? Was I looking upset? You know, like, you know, I don't know what I looked like in that moment, but, but it was just fantastic to know that we're connecting with community and that, uh, and that we are influencing the community to be a vibrant one, to be a safer one. We're praying constantly. I have an advantage from my office that I can look out through the window and I can see all these homes and houses and I regularly stand up and I say, Lord, bless those families. Bless every heart and every soul. Lord, let those souls be saved and brought into the kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are those who champion community. We're about growth. You want to grow? You want to grow? We need to grow numerically and we need to grow spiritually. That comes again through the Word of God. More people need to know more of Jesus. Hello? Amen? Praise God. Am I going too quick? You're okay? You're keeping up? All right. We are all about relationships. We love God and we love... Love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, yep, sometimes people can be hard to love. Guess what? You are one of those people. From time to time, from time to time, we can all be a little bit hard to love. But, you know, but we just, we just lay all that down and we say, no, we're going to show love above everything else. We're going to show love because God is, is calling for us to be love in the community. Amen? Amen? So it's about pursuing relationships. You know, I, I actually love this little bit about church is the fact that, you know, there are people from different walks, different backgrounds, different cultures, different nationalities, different professions, all in the one room. And, and when people get together like that, it's like strengths, one person's strength can assist somebody's weakness. One person's, you know, strength in a particular area can help somebody else in what they need. Amen. God has not called me to be a builder, but I know a builder in the church. Amen. Yeah. Things like that. All right. So relationships are really, really important. Everybody say, ooh, uh, we are up to let's build this. All right, so let's build this. There's a reason why I'm moving quickly. Are you okay? Because we have an exciting AGM to get to. Remember? Okay. All right, so let's build this. Let's build this is about building for generations to come. It's not just about a building, but it is also about a building and the building that we sit in today. In back in 2020, all the way back when I was young, a young boy in 2020, we started this Let's Build This campaign, stewardship campaign. And it is about building for generations to come. Who are passionate? Who is passionate about their grandchildren? Amen. Amen? You may not have grandchildren yet, but we've, we've just had a new grandchild in our, not in, my brother has become a grandfather. And, and uh, you know, and that's super great. And we see four generations with, with mum sitting here as well. And, and that's super exciting. But I asked him, you know, are you excited? He goes, I can't wait. Why? He goes, I don't know. There's something about it. There's something about building generationally. Amen? You know, grandparents, do you love your grandchildren just a little bit more than your actual kids? <laughs> don't lie. I reckon it's true. All right. So... <laughs> Community is only as strong as our relationships, amen? And this is absolutely very, very key. We build relationships with people within each other. I know that God has called us 
to uh, prepare, not only prepare for growth, but also be the growth. I love it what Isaiah 54 verse 2, it says. What does it say? Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold bank, back, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes. Why did God say this? God said this to a generation who was, te- who was in the mindset of being temporary. All right, And what we have to uh, overcome as a church is being temporary. We've been in this building for quite some time and you'll see things like, you know, some items stacked over that don't look too hard. It's all, it looks a bit messy. But over there, items stacked over here, a temporary curtain over there. But the truth is, is that we have to get out of temporary and into a place of design and permanence. Amen. And this is what God is calling for us to do as a church. We need to prepare for growth, prepare our hearts for growth. That's going to require commitment. It's going to require me to ask things. As a leader, it's going to require me to ask you of things. Are you ready? Oh, a little bit quieter on that one. That's all right. I understand. I'd be quieter too. That's fine. And so <clears throat> where we've been, um, we have to understand sometimes, sometimes the tent that needs the most stretching is this one, isn't it? Another tent that needs stretching is this one, isn't it? Our heart. Yeah? One tent that needs a bit of reducing might be this one, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's just for me only. It's not for you. But, but the point is, is that we've got to stretch. We've got to be prepared for stretching. We've got to be prepared to have some elasticity in welcoming people in. They may not look like us, smell like us, but we've got to welcome them in. Amen. And we've got to make absolute allowances for that. And so where we're going is, hey, look at the bottom two. We've done it. Expanded CareNet, CareNet is expanding hour by hour, minute by minute. That is so wonderful and so exciting. Um, We've planted a church. Chapel Life has been planted now. How many years have you celebrated? Two and two and a half ish. Um, and so two and a half ish years, Chapel Life has been going. Um, you know, we, we want to see more growth in there. So I would encourage you to be praying for uh, Pastor Rose and Tim. And, uh, and uh, you know, so we've planted a church. Out of the four things, our future vision, I still have a heart to plant a primary school because good Christian education is absolutely vital in our community. And I have a heart to see this building, this this. It's a little bit tired, folks, all right? We're going, about, we're going to be talking honestly about that in just a minute. Hey, but let's, let's get excited about something. Are you ready? This, we, we can be excited about this, right? Right? Here are some plans and designs. Can you imagine walking into the building and it looks something like that? Wouldn't that be nice? You know, that's, that's actually the foyer. There's a pole here. This is according to a plan that we've actually drawn up, right? We've actually had drawn up by an architect. Can you imagine us there? You know, there's the auditorium through those windows there and those doors and some nice lighting with some nice high ceilings there and, uh, and have a cafe out the front. I mean, you might say, well, you've got a cafe now. Yeah, but that looks better than this one, right? Yeah? And so, you know, nice flooring and, uh, and how about if we had some doors that worked? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something, eh? What a predicament. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to talk about that. Imagine walking up to the building and it looks something like this. Wouldn't that be exciting, amen? Yeah. Can, can you see it now? Can you start to see it? Wouldn't that be beautiful of uh, thousands of people flocking into a beautiful place? What about our top entrance of the rooftop car park? Imagine having some beautiful daylight coming down those stairs, coming into that end, that end of the dark hole of the orange stairs over there. You know, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? To have a bit more presence up there, and uh, and um, that's a, an artist design. You might look at that and go, "Oh, that looks." I didn't know that they'd done that. No, that's been put over a photo. Okay, so it hasn't happened yet, but that's what we're building towards because it's let's. Yeah. 
Right, fantastic. You're catching it. All right, I'm going to skip through here. Second Corinthians, the Apostle Paul says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. How many know that it's important that God comes to God comes to us and he works with what we have as opposed to what we don't have. Amen? So, right now, I need to talk to you about something. We are right now um, facing a decision as a church as well. We're facing a decision. At the moment, the current offices in the mezzanine uh, up there is under a lease. Our three-year lease comes up to a close this year. December, okay? Now, if we can't renew that lease, what that would mean for us is that we move all of those offices back into where the offices used to be down here on this level down here. Now, I can just hear Kelly as CEO of CareNet going, oh... How is that going to work? All right. It would be pretty difficult. Look, we might be able to make it work, but it's not, I don't feel as though that's progressing. I'm, I'm, I'm asking the Lord. Can you ask with me as well? Like, I'm just asking the Lord, Lord, what do you want us to do here? Do you want us to free that up so that we can free some resources and, and adjust things down here? But at the moment, that is the reality of a decision that we are having to make as a church. Okay? We'll come back to that. So what that means for the organisation of everything downstairs is pretty horrendous but 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 we have faith don't we amen Amen. so remember that church can happen anywhere it can actually happen in your home yeah it can happen anywhere. It can happen in parks. It can, you know, Chapel Life started off holding church in the in one of the local parks there, and and that was like powerful stuff. And it can happen even online. Do you know there's a lot of online church happening at the moment? All right, okay. If that floats your boat, go for it. But I think it's better to come in where people are at. But. For our culture here in Australia, church is much better when there is a community centre, when there is a church building. People connect much better together when it's an environment that needs to be clean, it needs to look good, it needs to smell good, it needs to function well, and most of all, it needs to reflect the kingdom of God. Amen? Right? So some people, you know, I mean, what we're asking for here, what we're building towards is a bold vision. How many know that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28 to a few disciples who were present at the time, he said these words, he said, go therefore into all the world and therefore make disciples of all nations and all people. He said, heal the sick. We okay with doing that? Then he said, raise the dead. How are you going with that? Anybody achieve that yet? Sometimes Sunday mornings feel a bit that way, but that's okay. Me, that's me getting up out of bed is what I'm talking about. All right. Um, uh, Raise the dead, heal, heal the sick and cast out demons. Right? And make disciples of all nations. See, this is what Jesus is calling us to do. Not just turn up at 10 a.m. on church on a Sunday, but actually, you know, it's a commission. It's a commissioning. It's a, it's a partnering with God. And see, sometimes people have felt churches talk about money too much. We actually, as a church, have been talking about money for several weeks, haven't we? And the truth is that money affects almost every aspect of our life. Don't have any and see how far you go, right? It actually impacts our life quite significantly. But God knows this. And this is why Jesus said at the very end of that commissioning statement, he said, I will be with you even to the end of the age. I will be with you always. How many find comfort in that? 
The next truth, that if a church never talked about the area of raising money and building vision, then we would not have the building and the facilities that we actually have today. Just look around the place. Look at those chairs, wonderful chairs that you're sitting on. Can you remember it, right? You would not be able to sit here unless somebody had a vision for it, unless somebody birthed that vision. If you're watching online, somebody had a vision to be able to proclaim the gospel to thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not 500 subscribers all over the world, right? And that's, and that's what this began with. And that was long before COVID ever hit that God planted that vision in the leadership of the church today. And today we are able to send our message all around the world. Amen. And so it is clear that God has positioned us here in the eastern suburbs to, what does he say? Heal the, raise the, and preach the gospel, I didn't say that one before, but to all people. Why? So that everybody would, everybody, everybody, everybody in the city of Manningham and all the surrounding council areas would know that Jesus Christ is Lord and would have an opportunity to say yes to him. That's the truth of it. Hello? That's the truth of it. Not everybody will say yes to him, but everybody needs to be given an opportunity to say yes. Hello? So right now, that master plan that I showed you, I mean, we've got a floor plan and everything. They were, just the, they were just the bits that look really, really good, right? That master plan is well over a million dollars to get that done. Everybody take a breath. Oh, wow. Sounds like a really big figure, doesn't it? But let's break that down. See the chairs that you're sitting on? I'm just going to disappear off camera for a minute and drive the media guys absolutely crazy. I'm going to bring over this old Bertha here. <laughs> Everybody remember this sucker here? <laughs> All right. We, we beautifully donated the, our, um, most of these to a beautiful church up in the hills up there. But these were ex-reception chairs. So the second hand when, when we got them, right? And... Oh, just not quite the same as those there, right? Right? This is what you could be sitting on still right now. And even before then, it was... You know, I could hear people laughing that's been around that time. So understand this. See that chair that you're sitting on? If we were to buy a single chair of that today, it would be $65. Now do the math. We ordered 200 of them. That's a total of $13,000 that these chairs would have cost us. Now, at the time, we didn't have that sort of money to buy chairs. And at the time, we could have said, can't do it. Sorry, we're not going to be able to make that. But the truth is, we are preparing for growth and God is the God of impossible things. Amen? Come on. So as we're preparing for growth, we need 200 chairs. You might say, well, Matt, there's not 200 people here. Not yet, but start to picture it, start to speak it out. Hello? We could have said, well, that's it. Instead, what we were able to do is that we coordinated with three other churches that also needed chairs, that also had a vision for growth, that also needed comfy bottoms, because bottoms were not comfy that back then. How many know that the heart can only receive what the seat can take? <laughs> right? So what happened is it increased our buying power to order more chairs and it positioned us to negotiate the price per chair all the way down to, drum roll, $43. Not only that, but we were able to get the plush fabric and the extra comfy cushioning. So just, just work it a little bit down in there. It's going, hmm, that's good, right? What's the point of this? Why am I talking about chairs? The point is it was way out of our budget. The point is it was way out of our reach. But where there's a vision, the Holy Spirit moves. Where there's a vision, we can find a way. Where there is a vision, and the Bible says it very clear, where people lack vision, people perish. Hello? 
if you feel like you're perishing right now, if you feel like you are lacking in drive in your life, I'll guarantee your vision has leaked. You've lost sight of the call of God upon your life. God's got so much more for you here today. Amen? Amen. We only have to look at the Israelites, Israelites in the promised land. They walked into the promised land and they noticed that it was was filled with giants, but really big grapes. (laughs) Who likes grapes? Can you imagine grapes the size of apples? That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? It said that there was bunches of grapes that it required two men to carry, just for one bunch. Makes them darn good grape juice, wouldn't it? But what did the Israelites say? The vision's too great for us. We are grasshoppers in their sight. And then they had to die off before God raised up a new generation. Hey, don't let, don't let us be the generation that dies off. Hello? God has us in a place today. Anybody notice the, re, the wall behind the reception desk as you walk in? So go to the person beside you and say, ooh, looks good. All right. That was because we couldn't afford to do that. That was because somebody donated all of that timber and their time to install all of that. Anybody remember what colour it was beforehand? (laughs) An off-colour brown, I heard. Anybody remember what the colour was before that off-colour brown? It's interesting, isn't it? How often we forget, how easy we forget. Well, I haven't forgotten because I had to look at the thing every day and go, why is it like this? Hello? (gasps) Sorry, I just got a bit passionate. It was red. It was red. And then before that, it was a tan colour. Our amazing Peter Greenwood painted it with a velvet, like like a velvet type touch. And then before that, it was white. All right, but each time we upgrade it, we, we change it into something new so that you could not notice it. <laughs> no, so that you can walk in and go, isn't this lovely? Isn't this nice? Amen. Has anybody noticed that, uh, that uh, out of the seven doors in this building, as you walk in, there are three that don't work? Yeah. <laughs> Some of you will go, oh, is there? Oh. I'll tell you right that that right now. Can you let me t- let me ask you a personal question? If your front door didn't work, how long would you allow that not to work? I will guarantee you'd have somebody rip snort out there. You'd have a builder. You'd have a friend. You'd you, you, you'd rain down fire from heaven to make sure that that door was front door was secure. Right? I'm telling you right now. One of those three doors is our front door. Can I just get personal for a minute? How is it possible that we can allow the house of God to fall into disrepair? Isn't that like our own hearts as well? Doesn't it reflect who we are as a church to the community? Amen? You know, I can't stand walking past a piece of rubbish on the floor here. Why? Because if I leave that, that's the standard I accept. And that says something to somebody new who walks in the door. If you feel a little bit convicted, I hope that you do. Because we need to present excellence to the world. We need to reflect God. Because, guess what? Jesus is coming again. I am out of time. But... We've broken this down, we've broken this million dollar, and it's well over a million dollars. I'm just trying to round it down (laughs) to be kind. But this renovation, stage one, is about $325,000. Stage one. You might say, wow, gee, Matt, that's a lot. Yes, it is a lot. But just remember that when Anna and I first took on the senior leadership here, we were $450,000 in debt. Now for the last, somebody correct me please, but probably the last six years, we've been debt free. Praise 
praise God. And give yourself a pat on the back because that's because you acted. You acted. You did something. Amen? So what it might be is there might be a widow here who's, who's giving $200 a month into our Let's Build This program. There could be an empty nest couple whose kids have left home and they might be able to give $1,000 a month. There might be a business person who can give $10,000 as a once-off or each month. I'm okay with that. There could be a teenager who might give $10 a month or a child who gives $1. The difference is this, is that something supernatural is activated when we give according to our heart's conviction, according to what God is calling us to do, according to our capacity. To some, $150 is a lot of money. To others, they wouldn't even miss it. Again, as a church, I'm not talking about amassing money. What I'm talking about is the responsibility that we have to not just maintain a building, but to develop it. If we were to, you, we, we might say, well, you know, let's just, you know, let's just find another better building. I'll guarantee you right now, the, the amount of commercial buildings in the, in the city of Manningham is so horrendously low and it's gotten even less since the, uh, the, the new freeway and the tunnels have been putting in because they removed so many of them. Friends, we are here. I believe God has positioned us here. We are here to stay. We've been here for quite some time and I believe that God has got more for us as a church even while we are here. Amen. So I'm going to invite you to stand. We're going to close this service right now. We're going to break for five minutes and then we're going to open up our annual general meeting. But on the chairs beside you, there are giving envelopes. Uh, you can even give via the uh, tap and hold dot on the back of your chair there. Um, and it takes you through to a little tithely link down the bottom. And uh, you, I would encourage you to um, uh, uh, say what it's for. You know, you m- it might be let's build this or anything like that. Now, we have to understand this. The way that finances are structured in the life of the church is that tithe, as you tithe, and I want to thank everybody here and just congratulate everybody here that are so faithful in tithing. I think it's just absolutely remarkable to know that as a church we just we punch above our weight and, and, and we are so diligent as a church. And when I say we, it's, it's I'm... Just I'm the first amongst equals here. Do you understand? It's like I might be senior pastor, but you know, it's it's we together as we tithe, right? That tithe goes into the general operation of the church, paying bills, utilities, um, paying for uh, you know things that um, the building needs, the church needs. Um, we have a. Uh, brochure out there that gives a breakdown of where our finances go in terms of a um, a percentage. And then today, during the annual general meeting, there are the financial reports and you will see where it all goes. Um, but understand that the tithe goes into the operations of the church, whereas if you mark something, let's build this, then that goes into the amount, uh, into an account, a high interest earning account at the moment that is slowly growing in order for us to make improvements in the life of the building here and for what's needed. Amen? And so right now, I think we've got, uh, uh, I did have it here, um, um, the stage one, $325,000 approximately, um, of which we've raised just over 80000 So that's $245,000 left. All right? Yeah. We're, we're making good headway. Hello? Can you imagine walking through those beautiful doors that work? Hello? Yeah? Can you imagine somebody new coming into the life of the church and walking through a door that works? Wonderful. 
So here we are in this place of understanding that tithe is for general operations and then there is the let's build this. Now, <clears throat> some people fall into the mistake of, well, I'm just going to give my tithe into the let's build this. That's fine, but if you want the electricity to stay on, you still need, we still need to be paying the bills. <laughs> Does that make sense? Is that okay? Remember how I said we're just going to talk as a church family today? Is that right? So, so I just want to make that clear. We have a vision. You have a vision that we are working towards. We're doing away with temporary or just making do. And right now we want to say, yes, Lord, by your design, take effect in our life. By what you are doing, continue to do it. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to invite you, let's stand and pray. I'm going to ask those who are appointed to uh, pass out the uh, offering buckets to once I finish praying, we're going to hand those out. We're going to break for five minutes, grab a bite to eat and then come back and uh, begin our annual general meeting. If you're visiting with us today, we want to welcome you. It's a bit of a uh, church family. Let's talk, let's talk shop talk. But... Um, I hope that you've been able to, uh, um, you're welcome to stay for the annual general meeting. We are going to go offline in a few moments, um, but uh, I'd encourage everybody to stay. I don't in, uh, intend for the annual general meeting to go a long time, um, but um, we're going to stand and pray and believe. If you feel comfortable, just um, put your hand on the shoulder of the person beside you and uh, probably ask if they feel comfortable about that. Uh, and... Um, and we're going to uh, just stand together and pray. Amen? Amen? Jesus, we just want to thank you. We just give you all praise and all glory for the way in which you have led us, for what you've done right up until this moment. And Lord, we're just so excited about the things that you have for us moving forward. Lord, the vision that you've planted in our heart the life that you have given us. Lord, I thank you for blood family members, but Lord, I also thank you for church family members. Lord, the people that you've placed in our lives, the people that you've placed around us. And Lord, as we prepare our hearts to give, Lord, Lord, that, um, that you, Heavenly Father, would be glorified, that you would take that gift and multiply it. Lord, that as we give today, Lord, Lord, that your word says that you would rebuke the devourer. Lord, that you said that it would be pressed down, running all over. Lord, we ask you for the John 10, 10 life and life abundantly. So, Lord, that we wouldn't amass wealth just ourselves, but, Lord, that we would reach more and more people for you. Jesus, help us in this commission. Lord, I just ask that as we give today, that you would stir us into a great place of faith. And Lord, you would bring, you would bring the result as we give all glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Anna. I trust that during the service, God was moving in your heart and his presence was where you are. Just before we say goodbye today, I'd love to give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. If today's message spoke to you, or you've been considering believing in Jesus as your saviour, then I would love to invite you to do that now. Would you repeat this short prayer after me? Dear Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins and that you rose again to give me life. I ask you to forgive my sins and be my Lord and my Saviour. I open my heart to you today. Amen. If you said yes to Jesus today, we would love to hear from you. 
We would love to celebrate with you, pray with you, and help you start your Jesus journey. Visit our website, manninghamcc.org, and go to the I Said Yes page. Fill out your details, and one of our leaders will get in touch with you. We would love to hear your story. Hey, thanks for joining in today and being part of our service. If you enjoyed today's service, would you click the share button and subscribe to MCC so you can stay connected? We all need some good news, and we would love to hear how God has spoken to you today. Visit manninghamcc.org and fill out a good news story form today. If you would love to know more how to grow in your relationship with God, then Next Steps provides the path for you. Visit manninghamcc.org to find out more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.